Hello you guys, I just wanted to talk to you real quick about something very important before this video starts. I guess all of you have read and talked about racism last week. Now this week is over and a lot of creators start putting out their normal content again. But of course racism is not just over and the action we need to take against racism isn't over at all. So I just wanted to say, even though this is a minimalism channel, I really want to make sure that this channel is welcoming to everybody that is interested in minimalism. And even though I think I am not racist at all, I want to educate myself more, learn more about it, and I am absolutely willing to change things in order to be more welcoming for everybody. And that being said, I also want to say that I absolutely know it's up to me to make sure this channel is not racist in any way. But if you want to say something, if you want to leave advice or tips or just thoughts you have about this topic, you are welcome to do that in the comments and I will make sure to read every single one of them. And I also am absolutely willing to take criticism because it's a very important subject I do not know enough about. With that said, thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy this video and since it is a very long video I added some chapters to it which you can find in the description below and clicking on the chapters you're interested will move you to the part of the video where I talk about that. Hello everyone, today I want to share my minimalist journey with you and just talk a little bit about how I came to minimalism, what it has been like the past four and a half years where I've actually been a minimalist and even before as a child because that has something to do with minimalism. So if you're new here, my name is Leah. I'm uploading videos twice a week about minimalism. So if you're interested in this topic, consider subscribing to my channel. And now let's get started. We will start in my childhood and I will try to like insert some pictures from the different states of how my room looked and what I did and what it had to do with minimalism. So as a child, I remember when I was like eight years old that I saw a friend's room and I thought, oh, that room was so beautiful. She had only three things in there. She had a bed, she had like one toy and I think a bedside table or something like that. It wasn't in her actual room, she had two rooms, so she had kind of a playroom and her bedroom and that was her bedroom. But I saw that room and it was really inspiring. I thought, oh, that looked so beautiful and calm and I want that. I had a similar room from like the size and it was a small room, but I had a built-in closet, which is not common in Europe. Usually you would put a closet or a wardrobe or a thing like a, a huge piece of furniture into a room for storage. So I had a built-in closet which just means it's kind of something like a linen closet would look like in the US I think and in Europe it's just it had like four doors you can open them and there was a lot of like shelves where you could store things. So all of my clothes and all of these things were in there. So they were out of sight and it looked clean already. But of course I had like a desk, I had a chair, I had a bed, I had some toys, I had, I guess, another piece of furniture, something, I don't know anymore, but I thought it was too much. I wanted to have that simple look of my friend's room. And back then my sister and I, we invented that game, which was called something like throw it out or let it fly out actually, if we want to translate it, translate it by word. And that meant that we would go through our stuff and just get rid of everything we didn't want. Back then it was very easy because we just could put things in front of our door and our mom would take care of them. And she would usually really be careful with like, what is actually trash, what can we use again? So it was really good as a child, it, it never, like happened that something was gone completely if I wanted it back or anything like that. So it was just a fun game. My sister and I played and we had a lot of fun and it was never really like minimalism, but actually we practiced decluttering where we would just get rid of things we didn't know. And I know it was so much fun playing this game and we would like rarely get something back if we really missed it. But I think like 99% of the things we decluttered they were decluttered, we didn't need them anymore. So it was just like kind of a safe space to, to practice decluttering. And I guess my mom was, she was okay with it. She sometimes told us like, we shouldn't get rid of things we want back later. And of course we had still a lot of toys and a lot of things. 
And maybe I have to add that usually in Europe or when I grew up, in the household I grew up, it was not like I've seen it recently how children would get loads of presents for Christmas, for Easter, for their birthday, for every other kind of occasion. And now I, it's just a choice parents have to make. But back then we would get like, I guess, three gifts for Christmas, maybe another three things for our birthday. Sometimes it would have, was a bit more, sometimes it was just one bigger item. And so toys never really piled up. And that was good because it never made us like overwhelmed with our stuff. And so it was never like a huge problem. I was never a hoarder. But when I like got older and I still wanted to have a simple, calm room and I would redo my room every few months. I would like <laughs> arrange the furniture in a new way. I would like push and pull things through my room and just like make a whole mess to rearrange it differently. And I had a lot of fun doing that. And I really always liked that kind of like project if I had the possibility to have something new. So I love that and I still love it. But when I like was a teenager, minimalism was really not something I wanted in my life. Actually, I remember I saw another room of a friend which I thought was inspiring and it was the opposite because it was kind of cluttered. It looked a lot like he just didn't care. There was just so many things in his room and I thought that was inspiring. I thought that was, was like exactly what I wanted because I felt that same way. I felt like, yeah, just, just leave it. Just don't care about your stuff. Don't put it back. Just let it be the mess it wants to be and I practiced that for another two years but it, it was never where I had rotten food in my room or things like that it was just that I didn't care that much about minimalism or the aesthetics of a calm surrounding and I would also go shopping with my friends I would just be I guess how we match how you imagine a normal teenager who just buy a lot of things wants to be trendy wants to be the same as all the other girls I was like friends with and that was my teenage life and then when I was I think I was 20 when I moved from Switzerland to Germany is when I when it really started and I will insert a picture for you where you can see my room with everything I owned back then of course I was still at my parents place so I did not need any kitchen stuff any like furniture any household items I just had my room with like my bed, I had a couch and I had things, I had stuff, I had stuff from school, stuff I made, stuff I bought, a lot of clothes, a lot of like other things and I became a mom when I was 18 so I had also a lot of like baby stuff for my son and so it was not, I mean it was not super much, I think my room was like a normal sized room, maybe a little bigger and it was full of stuff and I knew that I wouldn't be able to just move everything so I tried to start decluttering not because I wanted to be like a minimalist at first just I thought as a person becoming an adult it's really time to just go through my school papers and declutter whatever I really didn't want to keep and I was a lot because I didn't have very good memories for a lot of things in school and I really didn't like school anymore and I didn't think that I could get value out of papers and exams and things I had. So I started decluttering and in that process of decluttering that was actually I think at the same time where I really started like watching YouTube videos I stumbled upon this word minimalism and I talked about that in another video which I will link up there and I really talked about how that was such a moment for me where everything clicked. It was like, yes, that is what I've seen as a child. That is what I wanted. That was the, I mean, it just the aesthetic part, but still that feeling of having a room which is very calming, which is very like empty in a sense, but still cozy, that was what I wanted. And that is when I like started binge watching YouTube videos about minimalism because I didn't know that that word existed before that. And it was such an amazing thing to see that there are so many other people feeling similar to what I felt because I didn't know that that was a thing. I mean, of course, I thought other people had similar thoughts than I had, but I never knew that that kind of desire to or that like inspiration from having such a surrounding 
could be something that a lot of people actually think about and that which is actually a lifestyle or a term to, we can talk about, which is actually a community where I can connect and see how other people handle that because I never like knew anybody else who would declutter or get rid of stuff if they, they didn't have to. I mean, I, didn't, I also didn't know any hoarders or anything like that, but it was just like, you have stuff and you get more stuff over time and you keep whatever you think could be useful in the future and you declutter if you have to move maybe or if there's just a reason for it but other than that you just keep everything so that was such a relieving such an inspirational thing to find minimalism to find that word to find that lifestyle and from there on it really happens I moved to Germany and for the first few months I actually lived in my boyfriend's bedroom at his parents' house, and, which meant that we didn't have a lot of space, which also meant we had to like do a packing party. I don't know if you know that, but that's kind of a minimalist challenge where you pack up everything, put it in boxes and only take back what you like think of what you really need. I mean, we didn't do it exactly like that. We just kept the essential in his room and put everything else away somewhere else where we would take it if we had our own place and then a few months after that we had our first own apartment which was in a basement and it had a wonderful garden but the apartment itself was kind of shitty but where i live in germany it's really 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 hard to get an apartment especially if you're not like working a full-time job and earning a lot of money already. So we had that apartment, we were happy with it. We furnished it mostly with secondhand stuff we um, bought or were gifted by family and like friends. And from there, of course, my belongings were got more and more again. But already when I lived in my boyfriend's bedroom, I had only one drawer for my clothes. And that was a big drawer under his bed, which had a lot of room, but I was able to fit everything in there. Back then I think it was like about 50 to 60 pieces and I was happy because that was already less than half of the stuff I had before. So when we moved, we had more stuff again, but I like kept downsizing bit by bit and we did like flea markets and try to like sell our things online and it worked and it got just less and less and less and then we moved again into another apartment we had to get another like few things that we needed which is the apartment we're living in right now and so we had again we had to get more things so of course i think i own more right now than i owned when i lived at home in my childhood bedroom but i think that's normal because now we have to have the items of furniture that have our stuff in there because again in Germany you do not have any clothes that come with the with the apartment but we have to have pieces of furniture that hold all of your items and so we do have more we do have a kitchen we have kitchen utensils we have things to fix our things we have just household maintenance stuff we wanted to get another couch because I only had the very small one I brought from my like childhood bedroom and my boyfriend's couch broke down and so there were just a few things we had to get over the years but also at the same time my personal belongings still decreased so even though minimalism has not always been like a huge part of my life it for sure has been a part since I moved from Switzerland to Germany, that moment where I found this word. And during the move, of course, it was a lot of downsizing. It, would, it was a lot of decluttering just to like fit everything into the few backpacks I took. And then um, one car load we took from Switzerland to Germany. And now while moving and while just uh, living here, I downsized again and again and again, which was usually every few months I had another like wave of excitement and energy for decluttering and I, there's not much left. I mean, I really, my personal belongings are 10% or less of what I owned when I was back home in Switzerland. So for my personal belonging, there's not much to declutter, but also of course, minimalism is just more than physical items and I think the journey of where I started to tackle other areas happened maybe three years ago where it began when I like tried to tackle all my digital photos and 
just my digital life in general. I started like scanning every piece of paper that I didn't need to keep in paper form. And I started trying to like figure out a way to apply minimalism to mental health. I mean, I don't mean it in a way that I had huge struggles, but still being a mom and studying full time, maintaining a household and just being a person that has a lot of things <laughs> I think about, um, I for sure can profit from trying to apply minimalism to my thoughts and to how I spend my time, how I like use my energy and things like that. So that is a journey I'm still very much on right now. And the physical things I think are kind of done. Of course, there will always be areas again where I find things I can declutter whenever my lifestyle changes, whenever I don't mean like decluttering a whole bunch of things and then buying a whole bunch of new things, but still it does happen from time to time that some things I don't need anymore and other things will come into my life. I have recently thought about buying more video equipment, for example, lights, because that natural lighting is, oh, it's sometimes very annoying because it keeps changing all the time as well as better like microphones or just things I need for YouTube, for example, which would be items that come into my life that I don't have already. But in other areas, I realized that I have things that I don't need anymore, which of course can be decluttered even now after I've done it for several years and really don't have that many things anymore. But I think what minimalism has given me until now is just that feeling of peace, that feeling of being in control of my items and that feeling of being safe kind of, because I know if I lost everything, it wouldn't take a lot of money and it wouldn't take a lot of effort effort to get the things back that I actually need for my life. And that I think is a very good feeling for me at least. And also really knowing that my lifestyle doesn't cost a lot of money, knowing that I could move whenever I wanted, which I actually did. I lived in Stockholm for six months and it was just an amazing experience to pack whatever I needed into my 38 liter backpack, which is just like a backpack this size. It's a little bigger than a day pack maybe, but not like a huge backpack, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And I could just fit my whole life, everything I needed in there and took it to Sweden and we lived there and it was perfectly fine. I didn't miss a piece. And that is just the kind of freedom I want to have. I am very aware that minimalism if it's taken to an extreme and if I exchange items all the time can be really bad for the environment and that's actually really not what I want to do. I'm really aware of that and I try to live as sustainably as possible. So I buy everything I buy secondhand if possible and I never just throw things away but try to repurpose them, give them to somebody or sell them online to be sure that somebody else can use them. So minimalism for me has to do with the aesthetics because I like when my surroundings are calm. I like when I'm surrounded by colors I like, um, but also it has a lot to do with the mindset and a minimalism as a tool to just create a life that suits my wishes, that is what I want to have. And I think it is always a good thing to start. It is always something you can try if it's something that gives you value, that gives you more time and energy, that saves you money. And for me, it has a lot of benefits. There is no actual end goal for what I know right now. It could happen that I will decide to travel the world in some years and live out of a backpack. For now, I have an apartment which is like decently furnished. Of course, it's a lot emptier than other apartments I know, but still we have what everything we need. So I am just very happy I found this lifestyle, I found this word, and it has given me so, so much to my life. I think I'm a lot happier and just a lot more focused. I know so much more about myself just from thinking about the items I want to have in my life. And it's also just very calming knowing what I need. I will never have the feeling of missing pieces, of missing stuff, because I really know what I need in my life and what is missing. And if it's missing and if I really want to have it, I will get it in a sustainable way if possible. I hope my minimalism journey will continue in the future, being just as inspiring for myself, being just as like helpful and 
I hope to learn so much more about myself because I'm sure there is never an end to it. And I think my minimalism will change. Of course, it won't be so much focused on material stuff because I'm really almost done with that. Of, sh of course, there will be a few items changing from time to time, but I think there's so much I can like learn with minimalism when it comes to mental clarity, when it comes to how I spend my time, when it comes to really creating the mindset and the feeling of life that I want to have, as well as just getting to know myself better, because I think that's a thing where there's never really an end goal. There is always more that we can understand about ourselves and there's always more that we can learn to be able to like live with ourselves in a way that makes us happy and is con contributing to a good world and having a positive impact without like stopping in ourselves without making things that hurt ourselves just by understanding how we are, what we want and how we can contribute to this world. I hope you like this video and if you're interested in seeing more, I will link you some right here and I hope to see you next time. Bye!